evening, folks, uh, and welcome to this Friday evening, uh, a late evening off us, an opportunity uh, to think of the day that has gone by and to ask for God's blessing into uh, this evening. Um, I was out and about uh, for a little bit today, uh, out in the car, and while I was out in the car, I was taken aback by the huge amount of traffic in uh, and around the town. I don't know about you, but if you've had the opportunity to, to see out, I, I, I think things are, are changing in people's minds and people's attitudes, um, that um, things are relaxing a little bit in terms of um, attitude. And for that reason, um, you know, I, I, I brought these um, you know, surgical gloves um, to remind us that we're not through this yet um, and we can't uh, relax uh, things too much. We've got to be vigilant um, and sometimes we just need to hear those frank words uh, to um, stay safe. Uh, this disease is a killer. Um, and it isn't to be messed about with. Um, surprisingly, and then, and yet not surprisingly, uh, today's readings or this evening's readings um, really pick up on that. Um, the the uh, New Testament reading tonight is from 1 Corinthians 15. Uh, if you don't know much about the book of 1 Corinthians, um, Paul is into his third um, mission uh, to, uh, he's in, in Ephesus by this stage, he's been in Ephesus about two years, and he hears uh, about the, the church of Corinth that he's already been, in, been with uh, um, in, in previous mission trips, and he hears uh, through Chloe's uh, household that um, there's quarrelling going on, that uh, there's bickering, there's differences of opinion, uh, and the the passion um, and the focus is disappearing. A bit like uh, on the streets now uh, with the amount of cars, the sense of focus has gone. Uh, and what Paul does in 1 Corinthians 15 in particular is he goes back to remind people about um, the gospel and the hope of the gospel and not to lose that. Do you know, we are sitting on a Friday evening, but I wonder this evening, have you realised that we are one week after Good Friday? We're not even a week through since Easter Sunday. And I wonder in uh, our daily lives, have we reflected on what it was that we went through last week uh, and uh, what we celebrated on Sunday? We can very easily a bit like the church in Corinth, a bit like the folks out um, enjoying the nice weather and almost forgetting about this coronavirus thing, um, we can very quickly slide uh, into uh, our own ways. Thank the Lord um, for the gospel message. Thank the Lord for the hope that comes um, from Easter. And thank him a week after Good Friday for what he did for you and me. Let's not take anything lightly. Let tonight be an opportunity, certainly I felt it this evening, um, to remind ourselves uh, that we are people of the resurrection. We have a story to tell and we have so much to thank God for tonight. So our late evening office begins on page 162, and our psalm pointed for this evening is Psalm 118, a psalm that reminds us to give thanks to God for all of the things that he has done. Blessed be our God for all time, now and forevermore. Amen. Glory to you, our God. Glory be to you, Holy Spirit, Comforter, treasure of all goodness and giver of life. Come and dwell in us. 
cleanse us from all sin, and in your love bring us to salvation. Holy God, holy and strong, holy and immortal, have mercy on us. Read the psalm, Psalm 118. O give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love endures forever. Let Israel now proclaim his mercy endures forever. Let the house of Aaron now proclaim his mercy endures forever. Let those who fear the Lord proclaim his mercy endures forever. In my constraint I called to the Lord. The Lord answered and set me free. The Lord is at my side. I will not fear. What can flesh do to me? With the Lord at my side as my saviour, I shall see the downfall of my enemies. It is better to take refuge in the Lord than to put any confidence in the flesh. It is better to take refuge in the Lord than to put any confidence in princes. All the nations encompassed me, but by the name of the Lord I drove them back. They hemmed me in, they hemmed me in on every side, but by the name of the Lord I drove them back. They swarmed about me like bees, they blazed like fire uh, among thorns, but by the name of the Lord I drove them back. Surely I was thrust to the brink, but the Lord came to my help. The Lord is my strength and my song, and he has become my salvation. Joyful shouts of salvation sound from the tents of the righteous. The right hand of the Lord does mighty deeds. The right hand of the Lord raises up. The right hand of the Lord does mighty deeds. I shall not die, but live, and declare the works of the Lord. The Lord has punished me sorely, but he has not given me over to death. Open to me the gates of righteousness that I may enter and give thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord. The righteous shall enter through it. I will give thanks to you, for you have answered me and have become my salvation. The stone which the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. This is the Lord's doing, and it is marvellous in our eyes. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Come, O Lord, and save us, we pray. Come, Lord, send us now prosperity. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. We bless from the house of the Lord. The Lord is God. He has given us light. Link the pilgrims with cords right to the horns of the altar. You are my God, and I will thank you. You are my God, and I will exalt you. O oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His mercy endures forever. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. And then our reading from Paul's first letter to the Corinthians, chapter 15, beginning at the first verse. Now, brothers, I want to remind you of the gospel I preached to you, which you received and on which you have taken your stand. By this gospel you are saved if you hold firmly to the word I preached to you. Otherwise, you have believed in vain. For what I received I passed on to you as of first importance, that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, that he was buried that he was raised on the third day according to the scriptures, and that he appeared to Peter and then to the twelve. After that, he appeared to more than 500 of the brothers at the same time, most of whom, we are, st whom are still living, though some have fallen asleep. Then he appeared to James, then to all the apostles, and last of all, he appeared to me also as to one abnormally born, for I am the least of the apostles and do not even deserve to be called an apostle because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God, I am what I am. And his grace to me was not without effect. 
No, I worked hard, harder than all of them. Yet not I, but the grace of God that was with me. Whether then it was I or they, this is what we preach, and this is what you believed. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Now I'm going to say the Nunc Dimittis, the Song of Simeon. Lord, now you let your servant go in peace. Your word has been fulfilled. My own eyes have seen the salvation which you have prepared in the sight of every people. A light to reveal you to the nations and the glory of your people Israel. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. Let us pray. Let us pray to the Lord with all our heart and with all our soul. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray for all Christian people that they may live in love and truth. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray for all ministers of the church and for our brothers and sisters in Christ. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray for peace throughout the world and for all governments. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray for our neighbours and all our friends. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray for those who hate us as we pray for those who love us. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray for refugees and prisoners and for all who are exposed to the dangers of travel. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray for all sick people, for the sorrowful and the dying. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray for the abundance of the fruits of the earth and that the poor and hungry may receive a just share. Lord, have mercy. Let us remember our brothers and sisters who have entered into eternal rest. Blessed are the dead who die in the Lord. We're going to continue now in a time of open prayer. And uh, tonight I'm going to use uh, a resource that has just recently uh, been produced by uh, Nick Fawcett, uh, who is a Baptist minister in uh, England. And the book is called For Such a Time as This. And it's written uh, as a set of prayers in response to the coronavirus. And we've made it available for you if you go on to uh, our church website. And on the main page, you'll see uh, one of the responses to COVID-19 is to pray. And if you click on the pray button, you'll see ways and means uh, to pray uh, and uh, access to this book is then available. I'm not praying for me, Lord, today, but for others. Young people meant soon to be taking exams, their future now in doubt. Carers looking after loved ones, striving to keep safe those at risk. Those suddenly finding themselves out of work, financial pressures added to fears over health. Owners of small businesses, cafes, shops, bars and restaurants among many others faced by the prospect of their livelihood collapsing in ruins. What had seemed a wise investment, now a millstone around their neck. Clergy, counsellors and chaplains seeking to give succour and support to those reeling from recent events. GPs, nurses, doctors, consultants, NHS staff, increasingly overwhelmed by massive pressures yet with limited resources to meet them. Politicians and leaders in this country and beyond trying to work out the best way forward, a way of safeguarding life as effectively as possible while also limiting potentially devastating economic consequences for all. Give help, Lord. Give strength. Give guidance. Give wisdom. In our hurting world, 
bring hope and healing, love and life. Amen. Calling for this week, the first Sunday of Easter. Almighty God, through your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, you have overcome death and opened to us the gate of everlasting life. Grant that as by your grace going before us, you put into our minds good desires, so by your continual help we may bring them to good effect. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And we pray together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Lord Almighty, come and scatter the darkness of our hearts by the light of your presence, that we may know you, the light of the world, and the one true God, blessed this night and forevermore. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. May the Almighty and merciful God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, bless us and keep us. Amen. Folks, can I remind you um, to tune in on Sunday morning um, to our time of worship at 11am and then our uh, late evening offices will recommence again on Monday evening at 8.30 and I hope you have a blessed and safe weekend.